Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. The city deals with the sale of bear spray. The FERD wants your input on cannabis sales. The Chilliwack School Board wants to continue with their projects inside corrections facilities. But don't ask about the prom. And the waiting game continues for the Chiefs, for the BCHL, for the Jets, and for the Pacific League. Our special guests this week include Trevor Alto of the Pacific Junior Hockey League. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. The use of bear spray in crimes has got to the point where the city of Chilliwack had to amend a bylaw. You have to be over 18 to buy pepper spray, and sales are now restricted to outdoor specialty shops. You could buy the spray at some grocery stores and convenience marts. That is now going to end. Councillor Bud Mercer, a former Mountie himself, said this law was a long time coming. The FERD is updating cannabis regulations in the electoral areas, and they want to hear from you. The district wants to make it worth your time by giving you a chance to win a $50 Visa gift card. So you have to complete this survey by Friday, March the 12th. Once the survey is complete, the FERD will report back on the findings and then draft the regulation for review. Two planned tax changes that were delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic will go into effect, ironically, on April Fool's Day. Starting April the 1st, BC will start to charge PST on sweetened carbonated beverages. That's a move that is supported by health professionals due to the health costs and the impact of, well, of course, sweetened drinks and diabetes. The PST will apply to all beverages that are dispensed through soda fountains, soda guns, or similar equipment, along with beverages dispensed through vending machines. All sellers of digital software and telecommunication services will be required to collect PST on sales to BC customers if they have revenue in BC of more than $10,000. As part of these new requirements, and again starting April the 1st, all Canadian sellers of vaping products will be required to register and collect PST on all online or mail order sales, and that is strictly to BC customers. Following months of discussion, leaders from the 14 Upper Fraser Valley Indigenous Communities have formally agreed to the first Community Safety Agreement in British Columbia. Back in 2018, Corporal Chris Goslin and the Superintendent Brian Massey, the officer in charge of the Upper Fraser Valley RCMP, became aware of the need to engage Indigenous communities not being served by the Community Tripartite Agreements. Of the 24 Indigenous communities served by the Upper Fraser Valley RCMP, 15 of them uh, had no mutually agreed upon way with the Mounties to provide a policing service that was dedicated and responsive to the specific needs and the cultures of those communities. Now, for the next several months, and with the acknowledgement of the Indigenous leaders, they're working together with the RCMP to develop a new strategy. On the agenda of this week's meeting of the Chilliwack School Board was a motion from Trustee David Swanke. It was a recommendation the Board of Education requests that the Minister of Education and the Minister of Public Safety and the Solicitor General, General allocate sustained special purpose funding to provide year-round educational services to correctional facilities being supported by public school districts. This is nothing new, but this does include Chilliwack and monies for projects inside Ford Mountain Correctional Facility, a provincially run corrections outlet. This was all overshadowed by the word that prom's been cancelled. Last month, Abbotsford School District shut down any prom ceremonies for obvious reasons, for health reasons and COVID. Well, just this past week, Chilliwack has now followed suit, but everything will be done virtually somehow. Spring cleanup is underway. The Chilliwack Vetter and Fraser River cleanup is just a few weeks away, but this Saturday, it is the Hope Bike Park Cleanup at Cockawa Lake. It'll start Saturday at 10, and the details can be found on their Facebook page. And one of our Cheats Chill TV family members is on the mend. Last Saturday, a cyclist was struck by a driver of an SUV at the Press Road Roundabout at Bailey Road, and it was our own John Barson. You know him better as John Wayne on Chilliwack Tonight. 
An avid cyclist, John said he was lucky, although he did suffer a broken arm, face lacerations, and lots of bruises, especially to his ego. The investigation to the accident continues. RCMP, seriously, they are asking for anyone who saw the accident, and if you have dash cam, dash cam footage, to contact them as soon as possible. Chill TV Sports, while the BC Hockey League and the Chilliwack Chiefs remain in a holding pattern due to COVID restrictions, their season is still up in the air as we went to broadcast. While a Board of Governors meeting was scheduled for last Friday to decide the fate of the season and a $9.5 million package, Chill TV understands those talks with the province between them and the league are still ongoing. We'll have more on the Pacific Junior League in just a moment. The Valley Huskers continue and to continue their hope that they actually can have a football season so the team is holding a freezer meat sale and fundraiser until march 19th more information on the delicious menu can be found on all of their social media outlets now back to hockey the pacific junior league had to make a very difficult decision unlike the bc hockey league who are still waiting for a season the pacific league shut it down for the year chill tv spoke with the commissioner trevor alto about that decision and how it will affect the board of governors Chill TV in conversation with Trevor Alto, the commissioner of the Pacific Junior Hockey League. And Trevor, um, I'll be blunt, I do not envy your position, uh, let alone uh, Clayton Robinson, the owner of the expansion Chilliwack Jets. Uh, take us through the process of this past week. Uh, I understand that uh, the, uh, the board of directors meeting was uh, this past Monday. And uh, how, was the, how was the feel? Uh, was it a tension-filled meeting or was it a, more of a resignation that, okay, we have to deal with this? Yeah, I don't think um, in evaluating uh, kind of everything that's gone on, I don't think you need to look at the past week as, as uh, something that, that we just came up with. This has been a process um, that goes back uh, as far as last summer. And kind of as we moved week to week um, and our plans sort of um, adapted and shifted to games, to no games, um, to um, players only playing in various health regions. And it, it just kind of evolved. And, and it came to a point where we were running out of time. As you know, our buildings are starting to lose their ice and, and minor hockey's mm -hmm. finishing and the hockey season is wrapping up. And it, and it came to a time where we just didn't see um, that thing restrictions would be opened up and allow us to have uh, some game play in a reasonable time. Um, so the decision was was pretty clear that it was it was time to make an announcement that uh, this season was over and, and refocus for next year. Uh, for hockey fans who may not be in the know, did you have the same situation as the BC Hockey League with 20 year olds who are aging out and you want to give them some some play time because if they haven't been drafted yet, you want to at least have some video to give the NHL scouts. Yeah, it's, it, we're in the exact same situation. We've got kids that are looking to move on to schools and, and whatnot. Um, obviously, even some of the younger kids that are looking to make the move to Junior A or the Western Hockey League or where, wherever it may be. And, and um, we just haven't been able to provide um, that opportunity to them because we can't get back and play. We had plans in place all the way up till um, just on Monday on, on what it would look like. And, and a big focus of that would have been to get kids on camera so they could put resumes together and send video out and whatnot. However, we're just, it came to a point, we're just not able to do that. And the decision had to be made to be fair, to be fair to the players as well. They've waited a long time and they kind of deserve to know um, how things were going to go one way or the other. And unfortunately we couldn't give them the positive news that we were going to be able to play. So we had to go the other direction and say, you know what, it's time to, it's time to move on for this season. Uh, I know the owner of the Chilliwack Jets, Clayton Robinson, had mentioned that he said the kids can only practice for so long. Uh, are, what is, I know we can't really get into specific numbers, but are there any teams that are financially kind of shaky when, when we're looking at coming back this fall because you've lost a year uh, and you've lost some mm -hmm. revenue? I mean, it's not the same gate revenue as, say, the Western League or the BC League, but it has still lost revenue. Yeah, it is. Um, 
everything going forward into next year, I think I think we'll be okay. Our our teams managed through this um, as best they could. There was a lot of expenses that were incurred um, as things went on that were unexpected, whether that be um, various items needed for sanitary reasons, to whether it's cleaning their dressing rooms or their uh, areas in their facility that they were helping participate in. Um, whether it was when the health restrictions came in and and said that 19 and 20 year olds couldn't skate with the other younger kids teams had to go and rent an, another sheet of ice um there's just a lot of things that came up and and the expense category and and our teams battled through extremely well um, but that was also taken into account as we move forward and and the cost of of continuing to go and continuing to wait um and it kind of hit a point where we we had to make that that decision and and that was something we factored in as well there was uh and it's, it's, it's come up with both the, the WHL, the BC League, the Pacific League on social media, and I just shake my head when I read it, that while well, these owners are multi-million dollar, uh, uh, multi-millionaires, and they can handle this, uh, no, you have community-owned teams, and some of these franchises uh, are going to take it in the, in the jaw. Yeah, all our all our thirteen teams are are privately owned um, currently, and uh, yeah, they are. They're they're definitely when we had to split into into two different ice sheets, uh, ownership had to make a decision. Well, well, what do you do? And and teams around our league said, okay, we're we're going to attack it this way or attack it that way. And and I think it's important to remember that every team's different. Every team has a different set of circumstances. They're all different municipalities. As we went through this, we saw some municipalities were opening with less restrictions, some with more that are above and beyond. Um, the costs were different everywhere. So each team was it has its own unique circumstance. And I think that's important to have a look at it and evaluating how, how everything uh, went on. Also, uh, and there's been a lot of numbers uh, bandied about uh, with the province helping out financially, the other two leagues that we mentioned. Was there any type of a package that you proposed or the province proposed? I mean, nine and a half million dollars is a number that gets bounced around a lot with the, with the BC Hockey League. Was there anything like that for the Pacific League or was it much smaller or none at all? No, we've, I've sent some letters and, and such um, to Melanie Mark and, and we've been in communication a little bit looking on the funding side of things, but there's nowhere... Um, uh, we haven't gone at money, definitely not in the $9.2 million range. Um, our focus kind of from the get-go was um, with the way things are evolving, there's so many sports groups out there um, and, and culture groups and, and everybody else who's who's suffering through this. Our kind of mindset was, well, you know what? We've got to look at our own group and our own um, processes and our own structure and find a way to get through this um, on our own. Um, if we hang it out that we're not going to get through unless government funding comes in, um, I don't think that's the right way to go. And so our teams from the onset set a focus of, okay, let's set some parameters, let, let's put some things in place, let's keep some checks and balances. Um, we were constantly revisiting what groups were doing to make sure everybody um, was still maintaining um, some financial health, and, and that's how we're, we're kind of getting through here. It would be great to have some government funding come and assist us in, in some of those costs that we had to incur and some that we're going to continue to incur into the future as we get through to the fan, pan, this pandemic in year two and year three, maybe. Um, it would be great to have some government funding, but you know what? We're not, we're not um, um, banking on it. Trevor Alto, Commissioner of the Pacific Junior Hockey League, and uh, hopefully our next conversation will be that first day in the fall where we drop the puck. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you very much. And you're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. Chill TV weather. After a week of sunshine, it'll be, well, some sun and showers for the weekend. Uh, figures. Highs anywhere from 10 to 15, depending on how things turn out. And uh, just a reminder, this weekend is daylight saving time. We flip either Saturday night or Sunday morning and go ahead one hour. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane.